Hello and welcome back to the Fencing Refer YouTube channel. My name is Lisa Campy Sapri and I can be found on thefencingref.com and on Facebook and don't forget to subscribe. So today, as promised, we're going to be starting to go over the penalty chart. The penalty chart is one of those fantastic reference sources that you're going to use as a referee a lot. I have one laminated in my pocket and having one on hand is really helpful. But you got to know top to bottom what they are. And so these next few series, next few videos in the series are going to be about how do I apply the rules? What are reasonable applications of the rules? And what are, you know, the rules? We're going to be going over them top to bottom. So today we're going to start with the group one penalties. Remember the group one penalties are a yellow and a second violation of the rule is a red. We don't do yellow plus yellow equals red. It's yellow to red. Super simple and a lot easier than it used to be, honestly. So leaving the strip without permission, abandon the piste without authorization. Um, that's how it is in French and that's one of the ways I remember it. The simplest way that most of us come across this is when, uh, believe it or not, when a fencer steps off the fencing strip to listen to their coach or their parent or something. And it's kind of surprising the first time it happens. The first time it happened to me, it was uh, in a bout like that was pretty high level, a national tournament. And I went, you are not allowed to do that. That's actually a card if you do that. And I was almost sounding surprised because it is a card if you leave the strip without permission. And she kind of looked at me and I'm like, next time you do that, I'm going to have to card you. And I almost had the question mark in my voice, right? You have to make sure that even if they don't know it's a rule, even if they don't know it's a violation, that you still apply it. So leaving the piece without permission. You can't leave the strip without authorization. The next time they do it, we go into kind of that parent mode. You tell them something and then you apply. So you have to be consistent. You can't just say it and then not give the card. Some referees over give cards and we're going to talk about that at some point in a module. Next thing we're going to talk about on our little thing is core core to avoid a touch. First, let's talk about what core core means. Core core means literally body to body. This, if I were somebody else, this is core core. Any amount of body contact is core core. I remember I was refereeing foil and these two guys, they tapped knees by accident. They went in close and I said, halt core core. Nothing is after because of course, right after you call the car hort, halt for core core right somebody goes whoop and they hit and th there wasn't core core and i went your knees touched and i kind of pointed to their knees and they look down they look up they shrug they get back and on guard because they knew the most basic definition of core core is body to body any part uh bell to bell is not core core bell to bell can be a halt because a lot of times when the the guards clash together. You got one person going like this because it hurts, right? Sometimes the bells sneak past each other and they kind of get locked. Remember, the rules very clearly say that you must be able to yield your weapon properly. If you can't yield that weapon properly, you have to call a halt. It is, a, I can't say a normal thing, but it's a more typical thing for a younger referee to call a halt for core core as bell guards to bell guards. And it's, it's a, an error and it's a misapplication of the rule. Now remember, a misapplication of the rule is something that is protestable. So if they call a halt for core core, you can say, I think that's a misapplication of the rule. A protest that is an unjustified appeal, that's another yellow card that's later in the, the chart, right? But you can, if they call halt for core core, that they say is bell guard to bell guard, it is never de defined in the rule book as that something to think about. Um, another thing we're going to talk about is core core. Who's causing it? This is a really difficult thing. I go like this because these are my bunny fencers. I have bunny fencers that I use. So if I go like this, it's very clear that this is the fencer that is causing core core, right? If I go like this, I finish my action and this person goes in, this person caused core core. So I'm going to say something and I'm going to repeat it. In priority, we're looking for who starts first, right? Attack, counterattack. We're looking for that person who's initiating or is launching an action. In core core, we're looking for who moves last. 
That is the person who causes it. So priority is who starts first. Core, core, we have to flip our mindset. It's who starts or the action last. So observe, this person does an advanced lunge, that person caused core, core. That one's hard, isn't it? Because that person, this person on this side caused core, core. It can be very difficult to kind of tease out who's causing core, core. We don't have rules now around core, core as a simple card, right? So there's no more core, core, just yellow. We only have core, core to avoid a touch and jostling. Core, core to avoid a touch can be on purpose. It can be by accident. And the important thing for you to do is to make sure that you are determining is it on purpose or is it an accident? Even if it's an accident, it is still cardable. What I do is I put that detective mindset on and I say, are you aware the core core to avoid a touch is a yellow card? And sometimes I get the look on their face, which means, yeah, they've gotten that card before and it's an accident. They don't realize that they're closing in the distance, causing the body contact to cause a halt. And they need to get this habit out of their habit structure. Sometimes you get the response of, ooh, that's a card. Nobody's ever carded for me for that. I have no idea. Sometimes in those situations, I'll say, both of you are pretty close at doing this because a lot of times that's what happens. They just get that dynamic of two fencers who are pretty close at doing it. Next time for either of you is a card. And that's a way of looking reasonable, of kind of educating the fencers, especially if it's a local thing uh, with newer fencers. That's not a bad consideration to the athletes. And that's really something that makes you look more reasonable and make you look like somebody who is there for the athletes. It is the secret. It's the person who moves last is the one who's causing it. All right, how's that brain? The brain's doing all right because that might be something new for you. The next one on our penalty chart is turning the back to the opponent. Me, I think of it as a very simplistic way. If I had Campy Sapri on my back, written on my back, if you couldn't read that name, chances are it was turning the back to the opponent. So a lot of times this happens when somebody thinks they've hit, they turn around, they look at the box. I only turned my head. I actually had a young man tell me that once. He looked at the box this way and didn't think that he had turned his back to the opponent. Really? Turning the back is relative to the opponent. So if, I, if the camera is my opponent and I do a parry and a repost and the camera is passing me, I'm not turning my back to the opponent. I am maintaining my rights to touch, right? Because I'm allowed to start an action before the pass. And I'm not turning my back relative to the opponent. We have gotten only a few in and we've already spent almost nine minutes working on it. The penalty chart is a great summary and it's something that you're going to be really concentrating on. This is the primary thing you need to study when you are studying for testers or you're going to ref a big tournament. This is something you need to do and it's going to be something that's going to help you a lot to understand it. But we've only gone, what have we gone? Three in, one, two, three in and we're already kind of out of time. So. Thank you for watching the Referee YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for trying to make yourself a better referee. Um, give me comments, give me suggestions, give me things that have helped you even with these few rules that we went over today. Thanks so much. Take care of yourselves.